Hello friends, today we are going to discuss one of the important topic Genome editing with special reference to CRISPR-Cas9 system Genome editing Special reference to CRISPR-Cas9 system You know, what is genome editing? In simplest sense change in the DNA what exactly it is either by additions or deletions or replacements of the existing DNA sequences is simply called genome editing or particularly gene editing it is refers to a gene okay how we can edit a genome if the a group of technologies which aids in genome editing are known as genome editing technologies with respect to its inventions in late 19th century, the first ever genome editing technology has been invented. But the most popular and the most successful genome editing technology so far is CRISPR-Cas9 system, which has been invented in 2009. Which has been invented in 2009. Okay. What is CRISPR? It is nothing but clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats, CRISPR-associated protein 9. This is the abbreviation of CRISPR-Cas9. That means, his genome editing means simply change in DNA sequence. Okay. How? It is brought by a most important technique, CRISPR, and CRISPR stands for cluster regularly. Interspacing short palindromic repeats. CAS means CRISPR associated proteins. Associated here protein 9. Clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats Cas9. It is a system that means it is a genome editing, but particularly the gene gene editing is so far this advanced because it is fast, cheap, you know, much accurate. Okay, because of this, it has become a most it, 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 it's called revolutionizing the gene and genome editing technology. How I will tell you? Okay, then you got its basics, you know. Clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats are nothing but a group of DNA sequences, better to call a family of DNA sequences evolutionized in prokaryotes like bacteria and archaebacteria. No, prokaryotes, it has been reported in like bacteria and archaebacteria. The main role of this CRISPR repeat sequence in these kind of bacteria, in these kind of prokaryotes, is to provide defense system. It's like acquired immunity with reference to what? It is with reference to virus. That means antiviral defense system is the objective of CRISPR Cas9 sequence, Cas9 system. It is antiviral defense system just like acquired immunity you know how it works for understanding we have discussed in our previous classes about uh, epitope-parotope interaction epitope particularly is called antigenic determinants are present in antigen paratope which is antigen binding site is present in antibody this specific epitope-paratope interaction is essential in fighting against the pathogenic bacteria so as to protect our body, what we call defense system. You know, in second response, our immunological memory cells, like T cells, you know, like they will understand, they will recognize a kind of epitope so that in the second exposure, upon the second exposure, the concern that in the specific paratopic antibodies are readily produced without wastage of time. 
That is why HIV specifically act on this system. That means macrophages and T H Ls because they are the T H Ls are particularly concerned with this you know anti scenario and the crux point is based on T H Ls. The, the concept is similar to the immunological memory. The same concept work out here. Here, how the bacteria defends against the phages? For example, in the first, we will think like this. In the first encounter, a bacteriophage attacks bacteria, right? And the DNA has been insert, injected into the bacterial cell and this bacterial, what we call viral DNA, has been destroyed by bacterial defense system, simply called CAS system. That means CRISPR associated system. It is for, I will tell you in a diagrammatic presentation, but we will discuss in a synoptic form okay, for a while. And this is called CRISPR associated system. That means proteins, a group of proteins and enzymes which will break down the DNA fragment, the viral DNA. And a part of the DNA fragment has been, that means will insert into the bacterial DNA, creating CRISPR arrays. It is like hybrid. Till now, the bacterial DNA doesn't contain exogenous, any one kind of exogenous DNA. But because, the, because of this CRISPR-Cas system, a viral DNA has been inserted, what we call spacer DNA. Just like, that means creation of a novel spacer DNA into the bacterial genome. You know what happens? In the second exposure, upon the, like when the same virus or a similarly related family of the virus when attacks the bacteria, this novel sequence will transcribe into an RNA, what we call guide RNA, GRNA, GRNA, okay? means guide RNA. You know how it works? This RNA coupled with the Cas9 system, that means a DNA endonuclease enzyme. And this DNA endonuclease system in complex with this RNA, it will attack simply by, no, attack is simply, say, this RNA complementarily binds to the, that of the target DNA, that means the target viral DNA. How it attacks? There is a PAM sequence in virus. What we call protospacer adjacent motif, PAM sequence, so that it can readily identify this, it's a viral DNA. After complementary establishment with the top of the viral DNA, this Cas9 engine will break down, destroys. That is how it defends. It's a basic mechanism of a bacterial defense system through Cas9 system. I will tell you how it works. Okay, that means here the same concept, the concept is the same. Inclusion of the exogenous uh, viral DNA, that means phase DNA, into the bacteria by Cas system, then transcribing in the form of a gRNA and the gRNA coupled with the Cas9 system and will target the viral DNA by complementary simply by PAM sequence and destroy the viral DNA. That's how it protects. The bacteria from the bacteria with the, that is what we call antiviral defense system, simply called acquired immunity. Okay, the same concept we applies here. How we can that means how it applies in our human context. Say I told you already gRNA. We can prepare a synthetic RNA according to our choice. Say for example, we would like to edit a gene with respect to sequence anemia or a hemophilia or a cystic fibrosis or any other. For now, this has been restricted to somatic cells only. There are no trials for, that means there is no permission given for germline or embryonic cells because of, you know, some complex ethical issues. We will we'll discuss it um, later, okay. For now, then, then after identifying the target sequence, a complementary, that means the synthetic RNA we can prepare, it may be around, around 20 nucleotides. Then coupling with it of the Cas9 system, then cutting down the, that means scissoring activity, just like restriction of endonuclease activity. Here are, there are also endonucleases, Cas9 enzymes are also endonucleases that specifically identify the target sequence. Here the gRNA, that means the guided RNA is very important. Without it, it is not possible. That means you know how to destroy, but you should know how to go. That means navigation driven destruction is a motto of Cas9 system. Here, gRNA performs very navigate. It will take them to the appropriate location. Yes, this is a deleterious gene. This is what we call Unhealthy gene, say, sickle cell anemia, no, transversion. Adenine has been replaced by T, the T, that means A to T, transversion, so that it leads to glutamic acid replaced by valine. That means GAG becomes GUG, GAG becomes GUG, say, just one single base pair, one nucleotide mismatch at the sixth position in the beta hemoglobin gene of chromosome 11 leads to sickle cell anemia. We can replace this 
just will cut down the sequence and that's it and we have effective DNA damage repair mechanism which can replace it with non-healthy sequence this is how the issue and this is how the genome editing technology through CRISPR work out okay we will we'll take a, di a diagrammatic representation you know how it works for example you know see This is a bacterial cell. And this is a face, a bacterial face. And it is double standard DNA. Okay. Then we have CAS system. These are enzymes. Of any type. CAS9 is popular. Sometimes CPF1 is also one of the, but CAP C, yeah, C, CAS9 is very important. This is very important. Okay. Then this is one of the enzymes. It will degrade the, will degrade the bacterial DNA. Sorry, viral DNA. This is viral DNA. Destruct. Then, it will, then we have a CRISPR sequence, what we call. I told you already, CRISPR clustered regularly interspaced short pandemic repeats. Say, this is CRISPR sequence. But, space circulation means, I told you already, Viral DNA has been inserted into the CRISPR sequence that means bacterial genome. Say it will be like this. So this is bacteria. This is this is this belongs to bacteria. Okay. You now what happens? The space of creation. Then it will create one this for this particular sequence. Just for understanding, I wrote like this, you know. This is of bacterial DNA and this is viral DNA. This has been inserted into the bacterial genome by this CAS system. You know what happens next? They, then it leads to normal transcription that leads to synthesis of what we call gRNA. Say gRNA means guided RNA, simply guided RNA. You know what happens? This guided RNA will guide to different how, for example, you know, this has this will couple with Cas9 system. This is called Cas9. I told already. And it will take this again in the second visit. Say what we call second visit. Second visit. Again the bacterial DNA, sorry, whether the, the viral DNA enters. And it will specifically takes how, for example, complement I have told you already. For understanding, I am giving a specific example. Okay, this is a complementary DNA sequence of viral DNA. Then appropriately, the opposite sequence. That means this is called this is a guider sequence. That means gRNA. Say it is easy formula. Say then the Cas9 system. This is a viral DNA. This is viral. This is gRNA. This Cas9 system. You know, specifically breakdowns, scissoring. Because Cas9 systems are DNA endonucleases. I told you already how they will perform and how they will defend the bacteria from the target that means from the viral attack. First, the viral DNA enters in the first encounter, what we call first encounter. First encounter. Then this, this is phase, okay? This is bacteria. The CAS system, the enzyme will break down structs what we call and it will insert a part into the bacterial genome in that what we call CRISPR sequence 
CRISPR repeat sequence leads to creation of CRISPR array. CRISPR array. This is CRISPR array. This is bacterial and this is viral. You know, transcription it leads to gRNA, viral RNA, and it will couple with Cas9, what we call CRISPR associated protein 9. Then it will it will guide to for the second visit when the virus same virus or related virus when it enters into the bacteria and this gRNA establish a complementarity. Then it that means guide the enemy impact will take to the targeted location. Target, then this Cas9 system breaks leads to creation of you know destruction of destruction of virus viral destruction. You know, for example, and this we can say as palm sequence. You know, protospacer, this is protospacer adjacent motif palm, what we call. Because, you know, there is a, there is a possibility that it may disturb its own DNA. There are the, the, the bacterial DNA the genome leads to different different CRISPR, different RNAs, so that it can specifically identify the RNA because of this PAM sequence. It upstream, upstream to this particular targeting sequence it will be present, so that the CRISPR Cas9 system will operate and specifically destruct the viral DNA. This leads to protection from the virus, what we call antiviral defense system through PAM. That means protospace or adjacent motif. This is a overall mechanism of that means how the bacteria defend from virus. Okay, apply to our context the same concept. There is no different thing. I told you, for example, you know, in the same concept, but we create a synthetic RNA, say of around 20 nucleotides, for example. Say with reference to a particular example, better we'll discuss. Our target is to replace replace a disorder sickle cell anemia no? just a simple a single base you know sickle cell anemia say the, the this is a mRNA in normal sequences normal type of GAG that codes for glutamic acid with respect to sixth position in beta hemoglobin gene which can serve 146 amino acids okay and its respect to sequence is C T C okay this is template DNA then G A G okay you know, this is normal. Here, A has been replaced by T. What happens, you know? Say, for example, this will be, this will be subject to transversion. Transversion. <coughs> that means, G, T, G. Then the corresponding sequence, C, A, G. C, A, C, sorry. Then it leads to G U G. That means valine. Valine has replaced glutamic acid leads to sickle cell anemia. Okay, we knew that is a basic concept. Take for example, how the genome editing technology work here? We prepare a synthetic assay, what we call gRNA, complementary to this particular sequence. Say, this is a, this is a particular sequence. Say how we will prepare, say it will contain some C, U, C. So that means complementary, this ATCG formula, okay, C, U, C. Then we will add CRISPR-9 technology, that means Cas9 engine, Cas9 engine. It will direct and may reach this particular component. And will break down what we call gene knockout. The concept is same. 
this guider RNA, which, which we have prepared about 20 around 20, 20 nucleotides, around 20 nucleotides, which has been coupled with this Cas9 system, which is a DNA nucleus, will take the that means directs the Cas9 system to appropriate location. But here, location is what? The sixth position in the beta globin gene of chromosome 11. That means it's an autosomal disorder. So at chromosome 11, at 6th position, there are alpha genes, beta genes. Here, beta gene consists of 146 amino acids. Beta, beta uh, polypeptide, I am saying. And corresponding to the polypeptide, that is, this is a gene. And at the 6th position, this is a target location. And this guider RNA take the Cas9 system there and scissoring activity. That means targeting precision is achieved because of this guided RNA, similar GRNA. This is how the issue ends. Here the importance goes to gRNA. Without it, it is, it is not possible to specifically detect. That means what we call leads to gene editing. So this is the entire phenomenon. But why this has become successful? You know, just like simple. Just you use a vector and you incorporate the enzyme, Cas9 enzyme, and, and, and allow it for cutting down gene editing. That's it. That means faster, cheaper, precision. This is very important. Faster cheaper and precision because of this CRISPR because of this CRISPR Cas9 system a, becoming a very successful tool apart from the CPF1 CRISPR CPF1 another G enzyme also as well, but not as good because this is very important this holds good and this become very successful okay and this is about the CRISPR9 system and I told you already there are some ethical issues related to this say what if a scientist have or a, perf a person has an instinct to enhance the intellectual ability of his kid you know by means of he, he gets somehow he got permissions from authority so that the embryos or even the germ lines that means the sperms or egg may be subjected to genome editing so that it may enhance the physical trait here desired physical trait is increasing the intelligence capacity I told you already whatever the gene expression that means whatever the editing goes to the gene it will have an impact in the physical trait maybe a skin color maybe an eye color maybe a genetic disorder that means of course the ultimate objective of changing the dna sequence that means gene editing is to have implications on physical traits the same concept the intelligence somehow you get the permissions he has applied the genome editing and cas system and others and somehow he got permissions and he got applied you know he got otherwise results Instead of enhancing the intelligence capacity of the N1, it has completely degraded because of some some, some kind of missed malfunction or some kind of technical snag. Because it's after all, it's an experiment. So there is no guarantee that we will get a positive result. That is why till now, the somatic cells has been used, but in this case, animal models has been used to, to, uh, to conduct this such kind of experiments. Human models particularly you know, the germ cells and embryos has found to be an illegal one. Because this this technology requires much output, much resounding technology, so that the uh, the, the policy makers shall get on the yes, it can be open. But as far as my knowledge, we should follow as per the nature's wish, not against it. Okay? This is about CRISPR. And now the anti scenario is saying to knock out the gene. She knock out means simply to make a gene inoperative. Just like you know, gene silencing, gene knockdown. Gene knockdown means simply you re you reduce the expression of a gene. Is gene knockdown? You know, gene silencing means you regulate the expression of a gene, a certain gene. In gene silencing is similar to that of almost technical gene knockdown because you, if you reduce the expression of, if you silence a gene, the expression will be reduced. Gene knockout means completely gene has been knocked out. It's a completely found to be inoperative. Here there is another technical gene knocking. Here we are not knocking out. There is no gene knockout, just like what exactly we are doing. But here there is something called replacement with healthy sequence gene knocking. So RNA uh, interference, RNA interference is one of the technique, uh, one of one of the uh, best example, classical example for gene silence. You know what we call negative expression of uh, regu negative regulation of gene expression simply by mRNA degradation through microRNAs. Okay, we will discuss all these related issues because they are all interconnected. I told you genome editing with reference to CRISPR and what exactly CRISPR is a gene knockout technology that's it gene knockout technology leads to gene editing so we have to understand related terms like what is gene knocking what is gene silencing what is gene knockdown you know it's all then what is gene no 
you know, knocking down technology. These are all interrelated, four related concepts. Gene silencing, gene knockdown, gene knocking, and gene knockout. We'll discuss in the next class, okay? And this is about the today's class. You know, apart from my lectures, you have to follow a standard Wolfman's book and a basic book for the holistic understanding in examination point of view. Okay? Thanks for listening.